Hello, my name is Carlos Martinez. And mine is Edith Martinez. We are here today in Nogales, Arizona, speaking with the community about the effects that the militarization of the border has had throughout the years, both in the community, in commerce, and just kind of analyze what the perspectives are of these people who have been here for several years and what they think the militarization has, how the militarization has directly impacted their lives. ¿Qué, qué son los cambios que han notado? ¿Eh? El negocio se ha, habido, se ha visto impactado de alguna manera? ¿o? El negocio se fue para abajo, pues no deja de cruzar gente. Es un cruce, como dicen algunos de los, uh, ¿cómo se les llama? Coyotes, que ellos no van a dejar de trabajar. Aunque miré, no. miré a un montón de de personas mexicanas, ¿no? Que iban a cruzar y la inmigrante les decía a gritos, no hagan línea. Pero lo, lo decía en inglés, pues, lo decía en inglés, a rato les hablaba en español, la gente estaba asustada, es la verdad. Y yo estaba observando y dije, ay Dios mío, ¿por qué no me hiciste un un Pancho Villa o, o alguien poderoso para defender a esa gente, contesten, porque se estaban hablando en español. Háganse, hagan línea, por favor, y la gente está cada de pánico. Uh, uh, we do some filing from immigration forms and uh, there's a visa B1, B2 that is for the tourists that normally, you know, they request help at the office. Right now, it's been a little affected because uh, people are starting to be afraid to come down. Also, if it was one or two forms to file, now it's becoming like five or six. And people are, well, you know, there's a lot of saying. People are having more trouble to come into the United States. It could take up to two to three hours to just be there uh, waiting for them to be able to enter. The biggest changes were the, the size of the the amount of personnel. Mm -hmm. um, when I started, there was uh, just a handful of agents. Um, uh, I'm gonna, I can't remember exactly, but I would, you know, probably say about 40 or 50 agents at the border. And uh, slowly and steadily it started uh, incrementing and the biggest change was the uh, manpower. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that uh, mostly, the, most of the employees were local people as well. Um, slowly but surely, it started as the uh, as the numbers increased. Uh, they started getting um, more and more outside people, you know, out of staters and that kind of thing. But um, they do uh, take advantage of the of the ordinary citizen um, because you know that's the way people are. You give a badge to somebody and it goes to their head. A lot of people have taken advantage of that. A lot of agents that I knew uh, were um, like that. They, were, they, they couldn't wait to bust the next guy. You know, they couldn't wait to uh, kick anybody else back to Mexico who, to them, they thought that there was a, a bad passport or, or a bad ID, you know? And that's all fine and good, but uh, just because of a, you know, a whim uh, is not right. That, that's the reason I quit, really, honestly. And as far as border militarization, I, I like to say that there's just one truism about the border, and that is the more militarized the border becomes, the more vulnerable migrants become. It was then called the Immigration and Naturalization Service, INS. Um, saw the desert and the mountains as a ally in their um, border security efforts. And they thought that some migrants would be collateral damage, which would then lead to other migrants deciding not to try to cross. And um, that kind of collateral damage that we've seen uh, has continued to this day. And, uh, it has, and the migrants haven't stopped crossing. Uh, it just made it more dangerous as to where they do cross.